Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look finally at the 1810 release. We are going to do an Ubuntu 1810 quick look. So if you're unfamiliar with the quick look series, this is where I install a virtual bot or I install a distro on a virtual box. We have a quick look at it. We get some basic initial impressions. This is not a full comprehensive distro review. I save those for the other computer where I install them and run them in production for at least two weeks or so. So this is a quick look. Uh, is this worth downloading and installing or upgrading. So of course I talked about my, in my video yesterday, I talked about the, uh, should you upgrade or should you not? I looked at five questions to ask. So the five questions basically dealt with, is this something you want to upgrade or is this something you didn't? Why did I do that video? Well, I did that video because some people may not know what is the difference between an LTS release like 1804 is and what is a point release like 1810. And some people really need to keep that LTS going and other people, you just want to upgrade to whatever is available. And so that was kind of why I did the video to ask these questions. So today we're going to have a look at it. Why might you want to do this? We're going to focus on, uh, suppose you want to look at the 1810. So first let's go ahead and have a look at the release notes for 1810. So this brings with it, uh, really the only thing you're going to see different is the theming is a little bit different. Most everything else seems about the same. However, it should be a little bit more responsive uh, in uh, once we get it, everything up and running. And as a correction to the beta tests that I did, apparently you have to install the system and then shut it down and then reload it before you actually get the uh, the increase in system memory. So we're gonna have a look at the system monitor as soon as I log into the device to see how it looks. Um, so effectively all we're getting mostly is just some updates to the software packages, including the full GNOME 3.0 and um, uh, just a few other different package things. Now what that brings 3.0 is that brings with it a lot of refinement to how the memory works. And so in theory, we should be a little bit snappier. So the other major thing that we will get is that the disks now supports VeraCrypt out of the box. And this is great news for people using VeraCrypt to encrypt their files. That means that anything running this version of GNOME or version of disks on any of these distributions, whether it be Ubuntu or Fedora or anything else, if you're using VeraCrypt, you would probably want to use one of these systems that supports it out of the box without having other uh, other uh, add-ons onto your system. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on. Um, uh, let's see. OMG Ubuntu did a release asking, is it worth downloading? So they're just going to go through some of the, some of the things and I'll leave it up to you to read the article to see if this is something you want. Mostly uh, they're focusing on the fact that you're not going to see a huge change visually. It's not like they've moved a lot of things around. It's, we do have a new theme, but we should see it a little bit snappier as we get going. So let's go ahead and boot this guy up and see what our experience happens to be. All right. So now we are in our login screen and, uh, the point kind of still remains that I made when the beta was out is I really didn't like a lot of the new look that they're bringing on. It really reminds me of what Apple did with the iOS seven icons, gradients, rainbowiness. I'm not a fan of that. Um, that being said, it is refreshing to see a, a different type of login screen. We're not going to be overly critical of it. It does, it does look more refreshing to see something different. So we're going to go ahead and enter our password and our default is back to the, the basic default is the X org. You also can choose Wayland if you want to. We generally get a better experience. If we are not using Wayland, you should use Wayland if you need to, uh, you are going to get a better experience without it. So I installed the, I installed the system and then I actually ran updates and installed a couple other software packages for another video that I want to look at potentially doing here. So there's a few things that I installed. I installed GNOME calendar, or excuse me, GNOME contacts. Calendar does come built in with it. I installed Evolution, and I don't think I installed anything else. All right. Um, so first thing, actually, we're gonna do, as I said, we're gonna start by loading up the system monitor and see 
if this is um, if this is lighter on the system resources. Indeed, we find it is running about 860 uh, megabytes. So yes, that is a drastic improvement over the GNOME uh, base memory usage. So you do you can open this up to something with a little bit lower memory. I'm probably not sure I'd run this on anything less than four gigs anyway. Um, but it does look like a system. It, it, it has the basic feel to it as the old Ubuntu. It just kind of gets out of your way a little bit. Um, the theming is, the theming is, is nice. It's not bad at all. I don't have any major objections to it. Um, it is a little bit refreshing. It's slightly different. Although, like I said, I really don't like the gradientiness. You can see all of the applications, uh, that are built into the system. They all just have these faint gradients, and I'm just not a big fan of that. Um, that being aside, what do I think of the rest of the system? Well, it seems to run very well. Uh, I booted up uh, web browsers. I booted into uh, Thunderbird and Evolution. I pulled up contacts, things like that. Overall, the system is actually very snappy. It runs light. It does not feel like the old over-encumbering GNOME felt. It does feel like there are indeed a lot of system resources. So we should have some newer versions of things. Of course, our LibreOffice should be 6.1 branch. And it, uh, if it is standard to how Ubuntu usually runs, it is going to have all of our different plugins and whatever else available to go. So we are 6.1.2.1 out of the box. Let's see if the spieling checker is working. Um, indeed, our spieling checker is indeed working. And we also have synonyms installed. So that means that we actually have uh, we actually have our LibreOffice is fully set up and functioning. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think is GIMP installed by, by default. I don't think GIMP is. All right, let's go ahead and look at what software we have. We have our basic, a couple games. We have our Minds, Mahjong. We have our Solitaire games. Of course, we have the ever-present Amazon application that a lot of people are uh, not a fan of. Um, of course, it is on the, uh, on the dock when we start. Everything else we have, we have the GNOME calendars. I installed contacts, and this was all to test the Nextcloud build. So I'm going to do a separate video looking at how well Nextcloud interfaces with uh, with Ubuntu out of the box. Let's see. Over LibreOffice, statistics, rhythm box, settings. Now, this is not the minimal install, and you can see that it is fairly minimal, even though it's technically not the minimal install. Let's go ahead and have a look at that disks. Well, we're, I don't think we're going to be able to, to look at anything dealing with the VeraCrypt, but in theory, if you had something encrypted by VeraCrypt, you could actually get into it and, and open, the, open it up out of the box with this. So what do we feel like? Well, our applications are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter. It is a much snappier system than it has been in the past. Uh, we have access to a variety of different contacts. Of course, the Thunderbolt support is involved right out of the box. Uh, you can see with our uh, search functionality, everything is set up there. And privacy, what we would expect, manual problem reporting, location services is turned off. So all that's good. You can, of course, turn those on should you want to. So not a lot has changed, as you can see. So do you want to upgrade this or not? Well, as I talked about, some of the things that, uh, that we're going to see is it is optimized for better performance on a desktop. So you are going to get a lot better experience on this uh, than you have on even on the, the 1804. So if you're not concerned with an LTS, I would absolutely upgrade to, uh, to the 1810 branch. There is no quibble about that at all. I do find that the, the 1810 is far superior to the 1804 uh, outside the, the need for the LTS. And I didn't mention earlier, but the kernel update, uh, the kernel is also updated to uh, 4.18. Uh, we do have newer version, of course, of GNOME, like I said, and you're going to get that similar thing on any of the different flavors. And we have the latest package versions. 
So all that is uh, all that is good. My overall take on the quick look on this, this is a very good system. Uh, I very much like it. In fact, I just from what I'm looking at here, I might like this enough to give it a go on my main media PC for a while. Um, I'm just not feeling like it's as heavy or as encumbering. Uh, and for those that like to point out, I'll note we are actually uh, running this on a virtual box and how snappy it is on this tells me putting this on real hardware is going to work. Uh, one other thing I did not mention, um, the version of Nautilus that we have, uh, this is actually an older version. Um, and I think that they kept the older version because the latest GNOME, you don't actually have the ability to work off the desktop. And this version of Ubuntu, we still have that functionality. This is something that you would need for the uh, you'd need extensions to do in GNOME. So this is one of those few instances of GNOME that you can still work on the desktop. And for me, that is a huge deal. So I'm going to look at this and say that this is definitely a system that is going to be worth running. It's smooth. It's snappy. They do say the upgrade or the uh, installation should be quicker. I didn't necessarily find it quicker, but uh, Ubuntu's never crawled on the install anyway, so I don't care. Uh, it still only took five minutes to install. Got the thing booted up. And of course, it still wants to collect a little bit of data, uh, which you can accept or or decline that. And then once you get in there, make some initial, you know, your initial login, log out of the computer, shut the thing down, reboot it, and then you're going to get uh, loaded up into a uh, into a much faster system. Uh, I don't care for the icons, like I said, but uh, I, they don't. I don't absolutely hate them. I, you know, the icon pack is not going. It's not a. a uh, it's not a uh, complete system by which I'm going to uh, stand or fall on. And we also, if we want to, we can install the Ubuntu Tweak Tool and. Um, we can install the Ubuntu Tweak Tool and we can change the icon pack in the GUI with this, not the Ubuntu tweak tool, it's the GNOME tweak tool, hello. There we are. Uh, one of the things on the Software Center that I noticed is every single application you have to enter your password, which is a little bit annoying on your first setup um, to get in here and do everything through the GUI. Every single application you're going to need to enter your password. Make sure that, that you're either prepared to enter your password or just go ahead and do it all on the terminal. So. You don't have to keep doing that. Let's have a quick look at the terminal editor. All right, there you go. So yeah, just not not a lot different in the terminal. It is a different version, but um, uh, not a lot that I, I'm seeing different. So everything uh, out of the box just seems to work pretty well. Let's go ahead and have a look at that tweak tool. See what we can do with this guy. All right, so here's animations. Uh, so we can turn on, turn off animations. Here's your application. So uh, this is, of course, the the new application. We do have a dark theme enabled as well. So if you do want to install the tweak tool and turn to the dark theme, if you do really like the older version, uh, let's see, which one was it? Uh, no, I guess we don't have the older version. You have to probably download the older version. Uh, cursors, again, you can go with the newer theme or any of the other ones. I really like the cursor themes. Um, and then here, you know, there you go. If you don't like the icons, easy. Just, just change them. <laughs> no big deal. Here's the old ones. So you do have the option to go back into your older icons. So I prefer those personally. Here's your images, your backgrounds. Here's our desktop, so we can show our different folders on there. All right, we can show our date and our second hand if we wanted to. All right, so it works very nicely right out of the box with that. Let's go ahead and have a look at our uh, backgrounds. Uh, I do really like the Cosmic Cuttlefish background, though. Let's go ahead and just see what else we have. Just have some very nice little backgrounds. Oh, look at that. We have we have some other some other stuff as well. Oh, we have a lighter one as well. Let's go ahead and look at that one. 
There we are. So if you want a, a lighter, a lighter color background, you can do that as well. That's cool. I really like that one. That's a cool background. All right, so um, this is the new Ubuntu. Uh, my final verdict of this, I like this. I think Ubuntu is starting to feel like the distro that uh, that I first saw. I think that the 1810 upgrade is absolutely worth doing. Uh, very cool. Uh, so I don't know. That's my thoughts. Um, what are your thoughts? Of course, if you don't need the LTS, definitely consider going with this. Uh, it's a good build. It's very snappy. It doesn't feel encumbered like it did when they first went back to the GNOME shell. And I like it. I like the setups. I like how easy it is to make some adjustments. Not a big fan of the new theme, but hey, easy to fix with the tweak tool. No big deal there. Uh, overall, I think this is a good system. So I might just go ahead and uh, play around with this a little bit. So uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.